Yeah, let's get more on that Tesla story now. Tesla's shares uh, shooting up uh, more than 5% yesterday after they reported stronger than expected quarterly sales. Uh, as Dini was saying there, their stock is building, has been building throughout, the, throughout this year after a few issues per, during COVID and, of course, post-COVID as well. Uh, the EV company reporting record sales of 466,000, nearly double the 255,000 it delivered in the year earlier quarter when sales were depressed. Quarterly sales represented nearly uh, 100,000 more than Tesla sold in the whole of 2019, the year before that pandemic. Uh, Good news for Tesla, good news for Nasdaq and for other uh, indices, uh, stock indices over in the United States. Let's get some reaction to this one. Uh, The CEO of WCars.com is, of course, Craig Stevens, who's been kind enough uh, to drag himself out of bed this morning. Join us nice and early on a Tuesday morning. Craig, thanks for joining us. Good morning. How are you doing? Um, Yeah, I'm good. Not as good as Elon Musk, I'm sure, waking up to these numbers. He's a man on a mission. Um, He's sticking to that mission as well. And despite some bumps along the road, uh, along the way, bumps on the road along the way, uh, the numbers seeming to be delivered at the moment. Any big surprise? Uh, No, I I don't think it's a big surprise. I think, firstly, uh, you know, we're comparing numbers with numbers uh, during the pandemic and during COVID where... Uh, production was restricted down to uh, production issues in terms of semiconductor chips and so on. So production was actually, you know, not at full capacity during COVID. So now we're up to full capacity. And now uh, he is uh, applying a discount and actually being very uh, open about the discount, where before he didn't want to apply discounts. And also in places like America, you've got the uh, uh, federal tax cuts, which are, you know, a, a big chunk of the discount as well. So we add those two things together. And you look at the increase in uh, demand for EVs overall, and you see an increase in in volume. So it shouldn't really be a big surprise. How important is his global expansion plans as well? Because we've seen the jump here. Uh, Tesla do well. American stock markets do well as well. Um, But how much of the mix is exports and the sort of international market? Well, you know, for him... Exports is in, in, in critical, right? He can't rely just on the domestic American market. If he wants to be a global car manufacturer and if he wants to be the leader for autonomous vehicles, which I think we're going to talk about later, he has to have a global footprint. And I think that's where his big challenges are because he's competing with some very aggressive Chinese manufacturers who are producing some very cool products at very cool prices uh, who are seeing you know, as good of the growth as he's seeing uh, you know, in their domestic market. So, yeah, I think you know, it's not all roses for Tesla. Uh, He's dropped his price and his volume's gone up. And I think we shouldn't read too much more into it than that. <laughs> to your point there, BYD, look, not a mark or a brand that may be familiar to many, but is, of course, uh, familiar to billions in China and elsewhere. Uh, they outpaced Tesla in the second quarter as the uh, Chinese car maker posted record sales of hybrid and electric vehicles. Uh, April to June, they sold more than 700 thousand vehicles is byd available here it is yeah it is available here i mean i think the thing with the chinese brands is that obviously they're well known in the chinese market they're not as well known uh over here or in other parts of the world so they've got us you know they haven't got a, an elon musk at the helm that everyone knows uh therefore they have to invest a bit more in branding but yeah absolutely i mean the chinese brands now Uh, are producing, as I say, some very nice looking cars uh, that perform very well uh, at incredible prices. And I think, you know, if they get their branding right and people start to recognise those products, you know, we're going to start seeing the growth here. I mean, where these guys are also seeing growth is in places like Saudi. The Chinese brands are incredibly strong within the Saudi market. And also in Russia, where, you know, you've you've not seen for the last couple of years because of the conflict, the European and American brands. This is where the Chinese brands are starting to get heavily involved. So, yeah, the, the rise of the Chinese brands across the rest of the globe is, is growing very quickly. Uh, big thanks to Andrew Perrier for getting in touch with us. We'll get on to Andrew's text a little later on. Hey, guys, been waiting for you guys to mention BYD when you talk about all things EV. My company has been their distributor uh, for their uh, internal combustion engines until they stopped production in 2021. Thanks for that. Uh, we'll get into that in more detail. You just mentioned Russia there as well. And again, huge market, obviously, um, a huge amount of uh, sanctions on the market at present, etc. And yet, uh, still the demand there in. Um, I know that Dubai Cars run a lot of data uh, with the data and the numbers that you get as well. Talk to me about Russian buyers and this interesting spike you've seen of 
exports. I never really see the UAE as an export market, but you're seeing a spike in export to Russia of cars. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, the UAE is a, is a massive re-export market. Obviously, we don't, yeah. we don't make cars, but I mean, it's a massive re-export market. And that's because... A, it's great location. Uh, it's easy to get in and out. It's easy to get money in and out as well. It's actually, from a re-export point of view, it's, it's massive. And in fact, the re-export market is bigger than the, the local domestic market. But to your point, uh, you know, Russia, since the conflict, uh, their new car volume has dropped by over 2 million cars. So uh, they are desperate for cars. And of course, they can't buy cars from the Americans and they can't buy cars from the Europeans. So yes, they're buying cars from China, from China, but they also still want the European and American cars. And this is a great place to go for those cars. So it was almost overnight when the conflict started that suddenly uh, we saw great demand for, for Russia. And in fact, now Russia is the second largest re-export country outside of Saudi from, from the UAE, which is am- amazing. It just happened overnight. Uh, we got that growth organically. We were uh, Yandex is the Google equivalent in Russia, and we were top of uh, Yandex for exporting cars from the UAE, and suddenly we just got ourselves thousands so, of leads. Do cars help with that? Do they? You have programs that can help with the export of cars? Yeah, you know, we manage the full process. So if there is a buyer in Russia who wants to buy, or anywhere in the world who wants to buy a car from here, then we manage the full process for them. We'll do the inspection, we'll do the shipping, we'll do the transaction and manage everything and safely ship that car to your country. Question, how much of that demand is for EVs at the moment? Oh, from Russia, it's, it's nothing. There's, there's no demand for mm. EVs from Russia. Uh, and no demand at all, really, that I've seen for any uh, EVs for the export market. And yet, still we get the sort of uh, move towards EVs and autonomous. Rich, we just got a little cl- uh, clip there from Katija um, Hack, who we spoke to a little earlier on, Chief Economist Emirates MBD. She was looking at the Cabinet meeting. Katija had this to say about the autonomous announcement. There are new policies in place to boost the use of electric vehicles and also to develop the network of EV chargers across the UAE. Preliminary approval was also given for the testing and development of autonomous vehicles in the UAE. So big announcements overnight from the Cabinet meeting yesterday about the autonomous and electric vehicle infrastructure here, manufacturer amongst otherwise as well, We Ride uh, being tested, all types of autonomous vehicles. Your reaction to that? Yeah, I think it's essential. I think, it, you know, to get the EVs to a state where they are you know, a mass part of our vehicle infrastructure, then we have to have legislation and we have to have infrastructure. So, yes, these developments are welcomed and unnecessary. I think, you know, if we're going to move to an autonomous vehicle car park, then we need legislation that can enable that to happen. It's not just about the technology. It's about having the legislation that enables those cars to move freely around the uh, around the country. And, you know, we understand things like who takes responsibility. If there is an accident with an autonomous vehicle, who is liable for that? And that's, that's a big question that I don't think anyone's actually asked, answered yet. So there are some big challenges, but I think what I'm seeing from the UE is massive headway into this space, which is, which is encouraging. Addressing those with the vision. Craig, bless you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thanks for sharing the numbers as well. Craig Stevens is the CEO of WCars.com. Get in touch with them. Any further questions?